We are proudly joined by several young Americans who can speak directly about ideological intolerance on campus. Here with us is Ellen Whitman, a junior at Miami University in Ohio, a great school. Ellen is the president of Students for Life. In 2017, Ellen planned an annual event to display small wooden crosses representing the lives of the unborn. School officials informed Ellen that she would be required to post signs all over campus providing a trigger warning to other students regarding her display. Ellen, please come up, say a few words, tell us your story, please. Well, thank you, Mr. President. This is a truly historic day in our country's history. And I am so grateful that we have a president who recognizes that the First Amendment is under attack on our college campuses. My story is so important because I have seen lives saved through my Students for Life efforts on campus. But I never imagined the hostility I would face when trying to express my beliefs. It's ridiculous that it's gotten to this point. Universities are supposed to be marketplaces of ideas. They should be encouraging free speech, not shutting it down. And speech is not free when university officials put conditions on student speech. The only permit we need to speak on campus is the First Amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. You watch, we will be witnessing today some great future political leaders. There's plenty of them in the room. Not just up here, right? Out there, too. We really appreciate it. That was beautiful. Thank you very much. We're also joined by Caitlin Mullen, a student at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. While simply standing at a table to represent a conservative group on campus, Turning Point USA, which does such incredible work, and thank you very much, Charlie. That's true. Come on, we could give him a hand. Thank you. Caitlin was approached by staff and a graduate instructor and was berated and cursed at. School officials tried to bully Caitlin into leaving, but she bravely stood her ground. Caitlin, please come up and say a few words. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. President. What happened to me is common on universities today, and students are getting um, shut down and silenced on campus. So I'm really thankful that President Trump is addressing this issue, because as the future of America, it's important that our universities are a place where we could speak freely and have healthy, respectful dialogue on campus. So thank you so much, President Trump, for doing this. I have no other student should have to go through what I went through on campus. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Caitlin. Beautiful. And uh, I have to say that, you know, we have, in my opinion, we have more than they have. People don't realize that. You see what's going on. I just came back from Ohio. The streets were lined with people. I came back recently from Alabama, where they had that horrible tornado. It was terrible. But the people were lined, as far as the eye could see, lined up with people. And we're here. This is the White House. I'm the President. We're together. And hopefully, we can bring everybody together. That's really what we want to do. They can have different views. And if they do have different views, we encourage that. But they have to let you speak. They have to let you speak. Also here with us today is Polly Olson, a student at Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. Last year, Polly was handing out homemade Valentine's Day cards with messages such as, you are special and Jesus loves you. College officials stopped her and told her that she would be restricted to so-called free speech zone because some people might find her cards offensive. I don't. <laughs> I love that card.
In fact, Polly, give me some. I'll send them around to my friends. <laughs> Polly, please say a few words, Polly. Polly, thank you. So freedom of speech is near and dear to my heart. My mother told me while she was homeschooling me that I would need to know what my First Amendment rights were because someday they would be violated and I would have to stand up for them. So I'm carrying on her legacy of handing out these little Valentines, encouraging people to know that they are loved and cared for. And within 15 minutes of setting foot on my campus this past year, I was told that I was soliciting in disrupting the learning environment and that it would not be tolerated and that I would have to stop handing out my valentines. And I contacted some friends of mine and they sent me to Will to have legal counsel because this wasn't the first time the school had done it to me. They had stopped me a year, well, a few months after my mom died and told me that I was not allowed to do it then. So I went through months of trying to get them to change this policy that they were enforcing. And they told me that they would do it. Well, that was five years ago. So now it was time to take action and make them follow through with what they were telling me that they were going to do, trying to shut me up. I'm just one of many students that are out there that universities and schools are trying to shut down, sweep it under the rug, and make them be quiet. And I told them, I'm not going to be quiet this time. I'm going to talk to anyone and everyone I can about our freedom of speech in this country because it's really the core of America's freedom. And without freedom of speech, we don't have America anymore. And so I challenge America to learn to love one another as Christ did on the cross for each one of us. And that speak your differences. It's okay. We are in a country of freedom. And really, that's what's important, is to embrace the diversity that we have here, because that's what made America great in the first place. And we need to carry on that legacy of protecting our free freedom of speech on campuses and in our workplaces. People at work should not be afraid to express their beliefs. It's our right. It's our freedom. Thank you.